Hi everyone, so today we're going to talk about uh, and get into talking about finally strain and specifically the tensor, or, or excuse me, stress. We are going to talk about stress today and the tensorial nature and how we could represent stress uh, as a second rank uh, tensor. So we just defined previously in the last video, so let's talk about today. stress. We define stress uh, for our kind of simple coordinate system here, the uniaxial uh, loading. So we have a sample, we're putting it in tension. Tension is a positive stress from our coordinate system uh, kind of convention uh, that we're going to kind of utilize in this class. So stress will be equal to your force per cross-sectional unit area, and this is our cross-section here. So that was just kind of the review from uh, last time. So stress we're going to know as sigma. So stress is equal to your force per your cross-sectional area. And I'm kind of using this notation A naught. Um, to denote that this is our original cross-sectional area. So, if you'll notice, uh, if you pull a sample, if you pull, you know, uh, I don't know if you, hopefully you all, you know, are still old enough to have played with silly, or, yeah, <laughs> hopefully you're old enough to have played with silly putty, um, but if you pull silly, silly putty, you know, it extends, and that cross-sectional area, it's going to start to thin. So as you pull a sample and as you get into that plastic deformation region, you are going to start to see the material neck. And actually, when you hit your ultimate tensile stress uh, in our kind of previous stress strain curve, that is when necking occurs. So actually, let me kind of show that right here. So if you have a stress strain curve like this, we saw last time, this is where necking occurs. Once you hit your ultimate tensile stress, that is where your necking will occur. Necking is where, again, that sample that you're initially pulling so you're pulling, 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 and then it starts to kind of uh, thin at this neck. So you'll see it start to kind of form this neck. It thins at this cross section here, and then it's going to start to break. Uh, so let me kind of show that a little bit nicer. So your sample starts to kind of thin there. It forms what's called a neck. So this is kind of the neck. And you can kind of look up some more videos on kind of necking behavior and all that. So... Uh, the point is, so uh, again, getting back to kind of uh, stress is defined as force per cross-sectional unit area and your initial cross-sectional area. So this is actually, uh, specifically, this is the engineering stress. There's another form of stress called the true stress. That is going to be your force divided by AI. The instantaneous area, uh, basically, if you can measure the instantaneous area of your sample, you could calculate what is the true stress of your material. Now, stress strain curves that we'll look at in this class we're always going to be typically dealing with this definition of stress. So we want to know about that true stress exists, and it's the instantaneous area there. You actually won't see that ultimate tensile stress and then the drop in uh, stress there uh, if you plot the true stress. But again, that's a little bit beyond uh, the topic of this course. We could talk about that another day in office hours, or I'll make another video if people are interested in that. So just make sure that we have our units again. So force, oops, force is going to be in units of newtons because we work at SI in this class. Area, meter squared, Newton per meter squared. Ooh, that looks like a W. So meter squared, Newton per meter squared is going to be a Pascal. So those are the units that we're going to work with It's for stress in this course. So uh, there are lots of different ways that we can load our system. So I could apply a stress like we've seen previously like this. I could apply a compressive stress like this. I can also apply a shear stress, which we'll talk about in just a second, like this. So when we're trying to, just, and actually, well, uh, shear stress is just, again, force per uh, unit area like this. But the way that we're going to represent stress in this class is in a three-dimensional method. And actually, we're going to represent stress as a tensor property. Uh, so actually, specifically, a second-rate tensor. So I'm going to erase, actually, all of this right now. Uh, so I'm going to get rid of this. So we're going to represent stress and use this notation ij. So stress is going to be this IJ, where it's F of J over A of I. And we're going to kind of see what that is in a second. And actually, your stress is going to be represented by this, again, tensor property. So we deal in three dimensions. We live in the 3D world. Uh, so we're going to have this uh, basically a three by three uh, tensor here. We're going to have one, one. We're just going to iterate. Uh, over those uh, values of ij. So again, if you haven't taken uh, linear algebra, I would try to brush up a little bit on that. But again, we're just going to cover the basics that we need to kind of solve the problems in this course. 
and to kind of work with mechanics. So you're going to get a little bit of a crash course on linear algebra in just a bit. Two and some three, or three, three, excuse me. This is how we're going to represent stress in this course. Second rate tensor property. That's kind of the notation that you'll probably see. So what does this actually mean? What, what do these kind of I and J, what do these values uh, really mean here? So I is going to denote the normal to a plane. So normal to the, the you know, when we talk about area, it's going to be the normal to that plane where the force is acting on. So normal to the plane on that area. J is just going to be the direction of the force. And we'll see an example of this in just a second. Direction of force. So let's do a quick example. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to erase my nice uh, tensor property here. Let's look at an example of what's happening here. So I am going to play around right here. And let's let's draw what's called um, basically this representative ooh, excuse me, representative volume element. So we're going to draw an RVE representative volume element. So you can kind of read about that again in the notes. Uh, we're going to do this as one, two, three here. So I'm going to draw my cube. I'm going to draw it like this, and I'm going to kind of draw a little bit nicer. I'm going to switch colors. So if I apply a force like this, I'm applying, I'm pulling this cube as such. What is this? I'm applying a stress, but what's the stress that I'm applying here? Well, let's just follow the rules and look at what's going on here. So what is the direction of this stress? It's in the three direction right here. That's what's happening. We're pulling in the three directions. So I know my second notation, my J, is three. What's the normal, what's, what plane is this acting on? It's acting on this plane right here. What's the normal to this plane? What direction? It's still, the normal is right here. This is, yeah, that's the direction. So we're pulling, when we have applied that force, we're pulling in the three, three direction. What if I'm doing, applying a force here? Or applying, you know, again, stress here. What's, let's start, uh, uh, what is the plane here, right here? That's our plane. What's the normal direction to that plane? The normal, again, is that perpendicular direction. Well, the normal is just going to be, again, here. So the normal is in the two direction. The stress, what's the direction of the force, excuse me? Two direction. Simple as that. Let me erase this, just to kind of clean up. What if instead, I'm applying... Uh, a force like this. What if I'm going right here? Uh, excuse me one second. What if I'm applying a force like this? This is called a shear force, basically. You know, uh, shearing like you shear a piece of paper. You're kind of pushing. You know, so I'm pull. I'm basically pushing it in this direction. I'm kind of simultaneously sliding it in the opposite direction, like that way. So, what is the direction? Let's look at right here. So, if I'm trying to describe this force or this stress. What's the, I'm working on this plane, right? What's the normal to that plane? Well, the normal direction of that plane is three. What's the direction of the, that the force is acting in? It's acting in this two direction right here. So that stress is a sigma three, two. You'll see this also commonly written or representative this is a shear stress. So shear, you'll typically see using this uh, kind of notation of tau. So tau is going to be denoted, so this is shear stress. So shear. Usually these special kind of, and we'll actually look back at the kind of, when you're pulling, uh, basically, when you're not doing a shear stress, we call these values, so like the sigma 1, 1, sigma 2, 2, and sigma 3, 3. These are all what we kind of, you'll see it a lot in literature, normal stresses. Because we're applying our force normal to the plane on which it's acting. So normal stresses. You'll see these typically just using the sigma notation here. But for the stresses, you'll, you could also see it a lot represented in the literature with this tau. So I just want you to make sure that you kind of recognize that. So let me uh, do all this. Are with me? Clicking is probably extremely annoying. But 
stay with me automatically right now. Uh, let me see if Ah, I'm going for you, draw my cube anyways. Anyways, so let's take a look back. Uh, so now you're experts uh, in this, and you can represent any. We'll come back to that in a second. We'll do a quick little problem. But I want to now go back to this kind of tensor notation. So let's look at, so we know that our stress tensor, let's think over here, is equal to this, sigma 1, 1, sigma 2, sigma 3, sigma 2, 1, sigma 2, 2, sigma 2, 3. Sigma 3, 1, sigma 3, 2, and sigma 3, 3. So that is our stress tensor right here. So this is saying that we could possibly have a situation where we have nine uh, basically independent stresses. Um, that is very, very complicated to work with for our representative volume element uh, right here. So that is a lot of math to do, but we could simplify this tensor um, because we have to, uh, we make the, uh, basically this assumption that our RVE element, so this guy right here, this has to be an equilibrium. So we need to be in equilibrium EQ, meaning that it can't, this, whenever we apply a stress, this cube cannot rotate. So we cannot have rotation. If this condition is, if, if this is true, if we're in equilibrium and there's no uh, rotation, then you could prove, and I'm not gonna kind of, uh, you can read in the notes and actually you could kind of find online um, or it's not online, but you can read through the notes and kind of, if you are interested in that derivation, I'd be happy to provide it and talk through it more. But if we have this condition that we're in equilibrium, that we have no rotation, you'll find that sigma 1, 2 is equal to sigma 1, sigma 2, 3 is equal to sigma 3, 2, and sigma 1, 3 is equal to sigma 3, 1. You'll find that these conditions will be met if we have no rotation and if we're in equilibrium. That reduces our problem a lot because now we don't have, we, we no longer have nine independent components. We initially had nine independent. With these three equations, now our, uh, now our basically tensor notation simplifies quite a bit. So we've gone from nine independent to where we can now rewrite this, which is what we're always gonna work with. So the, the tensor that you'll typically always see and what we're gonna work with in this class is this. So sigma 1, 1, sigma 1, 2, sigma 1, 3, sigma 1, 2, sigma 2, 2, sigma 2, 3, sigma 1, 3, sigma 2, 3, sigma. So now we have a total of six independent uh, stress components here. So you see, and also you see that this tensor, it's symmetric around these values here, right? So these are our normal stresses here. Also, uh, just for your information, if you want to kind of calculate pressure, pressure is going to be one third the trace of this matrix. So one third of sigma one one plus sigma two two plus sigma three uh, three. This is also referred to the trace. Again, if you haven't taken linear algebra, that's just kind of the same notation uh, right here. So that's kind of a, uh, the key idea here. It's symmetric. So this value is equal to this value. This value is equal to this value. Your, your, ten, your, your, matrix, your tensor is symmetric around that diagonal component here. So it's really nice. Uh, it's going to help us a lot when you're kind of trying to solve and you know figure out, give me the stress, stress tensor, give me the strain tensor. Uh, it's a really kind of nice finding to have here. So uh, that is essentially uh, our stress and strain tensor in a nutshell, or, or excuse me, our stress tensor in a nutshell. I want to do a quick couple problems before we're ending today. So. For the following loading conditions, so let's look at 2D first before I really get mean and do uh, 3D. So I'm in the 2D loading conditions. So if I'm pulling like this, and if I have a system uh, as well where I'm pulling like this, so I'm going to pull here, 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 here. I'm also going to do shear. In this direction. So what is, what's my stress tensor for this loading condition? Well, I'm pulling in the two direction and the normal to this plane is in the two direction. So really I have sigma one one is zero, sigma one two, everything is zero except for sigma two two. 
This is our uniaxial stress condition. Only when we're in this kind of matrix can we use this expression. We'll get to this a little bit later. So again, this Hooke's law is only for a very, very, very specific loading condition. We cannot use this for this uh, stress tensor over here. So in this stress tensor, what do we have? Well, we do have sigma 1, 1, because we're pulling in the 1, 1 direction. We also have, again, our 2, 2 as well. And now we also have the shear components. And everything else is zero. This is a very special loading condition. So this is what we call plain stress or biaxial stress. Plain stress is the better kind of term here. What this means is that all of the stress components are contained in a single plane. In this case, it's in the one, two plane. We can tell something's in plane stress because we only have basically two indices. So we have a possibility of one, two, and three for our I or J, right? So here, we don't see, we only see uh, one or two. We don't see three anywhere. So all the stress is contained in one plane. So we are in a plane stress condition here. So that's for 2D. I'm going to leave you with one more example. Let's go back to our 3D element here. So I'm going to go to here, here, here. Notice I'm always writing my coordinate system because it's going to be really important. So if I have a loading condition like, I'm going to do this in red, make it a little bit clear, hopefully. If I have a loading condition like this, and a loading condition like this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this, what is my stress tensor? Change my, <laughs> I was trying to change my color. Well, let's kind of break it down one by one. So here we're pulling normal again. So this is sigma 3, 3. We know we have that one. I always like the normal ones first because they are you know, a little bit simpler. Sigma 2, 2. So I could start to fill out sigma 3, 3, sigma 2, 2. Do I have any sigma 1, 1? No, that would pull out in this direction. So I do not have that. So now let's look at shear. So for this one, what is our normal to the plane? It is normal direction is 3. What direction am I moving in? The negative 1, but the 1 direction. So I have sigma 3, 1, because I know this is symmetric. I put that on both sides there. If it exists here, it exists over there as well. Again, that's the kind of definition that we just derived. So those have to be equal. Sigma 1, 3 is equal to sigma 3, 1. What else? What's going on over here? What's my normal to the plane at which it's acting? 2, right? What's the direction? It's going in the 3 direction. So now I could do sigma 2, 3 and sigma 2, 3 right here. And the rest are zero. Are we in a plain stress condition here? No, because I have one, two, and three here. So that is your stress tensor for this problem. And that's pretty much it. So next time we're going to get into how do you write the strain tensor. And we're going to get a little tiny bit into infinitesimal strain theory, uh, which is probably a little bit much for an introductory sophomore level material science course. But uh, it's a really kind of nice definition. And you kind of, it's, we're going to need to know it uh, moving forward. So. Yeah, I'll see you all next time. Have a great day.